Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. All right, next question I have up here is from the School Anabolic Bodybuilding Members Community. This one is from Joshua P. Josh asks, is clean use declining now that Retta True Tide is rising in pop- popularity? And does Retta have a better safety profile based on the way bodybuilders dose it? Well, the short answer is we have no idea if it's safer long term. We don't have long term use data on Retta True Tide right now. It is in cl- phase three clinical trials. It is yet to be approved for human use by the FDA. It likely will be. It looks like it's on a fast track to getting approved in 2026. But we just don't know right now if it is safe for long term. Uh, Clint is the long term established sledgehammer that we use for fat loss in bodybuilding that's been around and widely used in our community for 30 plus years, probably since the mid nineties, I would say is the first time I ever heard of it being used. It is a beta agonist and clenbuterol is very effective. Now the downside with clenbuterol and running a bunch of stimulants on contest prep is the effect that it has on cardiovascular health. Uh, it, you know, potentially detrimental to cardiovascular health, whereas retitrutide seems to be beneficial I will say this, I saw quite a few guys last year on contest prep using GLP-1s and peptides such as MOT-C and uh, SLU, PP-332, when they were on, it's not, you know, SLU is not a peptide, but but you get what I'm saying, MOT-C and SLU on contest prep along with a GLP-1 like Reta or Trizepatide. I will say this, when I looked at blood panels coming out of contest prep, they were much better than they were when guys were using the traditional stimulant-based fat burners on contest prep, such as clenbuterol, ephedrine, caffeine, yohimbine, and what, you know whatever else the guys were using. I saw much better blood blood panels and, and overall health. I also saw guys that were resistant to fat loss losing weight like that i mean just just weight falling off without any really radical changes with you know guys that were resistant before now the downside what i've seen and this is just anecdote and other people will 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 say that's not true um this is just what i saw i contest prepped a lot of fucking people last year 60 you know this past year 20 the 2025 season i contested contest prep close to 60 people or over 60 people The GLP ones do seem to make it harder to stay full. It's just (laughs) specifically Reddit True Tide. The guys that that ran the GLP ones seem to have a harder time staying full and filling out. I what I what I was doing with guys that were choosing to use it on contest prep, I was yanking it out the last couple weeks before show to help fill them out. It it does seem it does seem to have some sort of effect on glucose metabolism and glycogen synthesis where guys I, I know the glucagon agonists so in theory should only affect liver glycogen uh, but there is some other effect where it just seems like guys have a hard time filling out they just don't look as full when they're running it in my my experience now um f- from what i understand uh you know and i apologize nick if this is incorrect nick walker used it on his contest prep you know nick's big as fuck and it didn't seem to affect him but I would say if you're a high-level competitor and you want to play a conservative, I would probably yank it out at least a couple weeks before the show just so you can fill back out. Just my two cents if you wanted to play a conservative. But yes, I would say overall, my guess right now, we don't have long-term data on this stuff. My guess is that it's probably safer for you to use a GLP-1 than it is to use the traditional stimulant-based fat burners as far as long-term health considerations go.